So today we're going to take a fascinating journey beyond our planet, exploring how silver's played a pivotal role in NASA's spacecraft it missions. Not only has silver been a key element in space exploration, but its applications have also had a lasting impact on technology here on Earth. Let's dive into how this remarkable metal has repelled humans, humanity's advancement in space and how those innovations have come back to the benefit to life on our planet Earth. When we think about space exploration, we often imagine astronauts in the spacesuits or powerful rockets launching from ground. But behind the scenes, silver has an un been an unseen hero in ensuring the success of these missions. Silver, with its unique combination of properties, has been indispensable in a variety of ways. Number one, electrical conductivity. First and foremost, silver is the best conductor, conductor of electricity known to man, bar none. When NASA engineers spake, and when NASA designs spacecraft, reliability is absolutely critical, especially when you're talking about sending equipment millions of miles into space. Silver is used in electrical systems, including wiring and connectors to guarantee the spacecraft stay powered up and functional throughout its, their missions. Whether it's in the elect, electrical con, uh, circuits of communication systems, navigation tools, or life support equipment, silver ensures that everything operates smoothly. Thermal management. Space is a harsh environment with extreme temperature fluctuations. The intense heat of the sun and freezing cold of the deep the space can wreak havoc on delicate instruments and systems. NASA has turned to silver to help manage these thermal challenges. Silver's excellent thermal conductivity makes it ideal for regulating the heat in spacecraft. Silver-coated materials are used to reflect solar radiation and keep spacecraft from overheating, while other silver-based metals will help dissipate excess heat. Without this silver technology, spacecraft would struggle to maintain the stability needed for long duration missions. What about soldering and bonding? When assembling the spacecraft, NASA needs materials that will hold up under extreme conditions. Silver is used in soldering materials to create strong, durable bonds. That's what we're trying to do here at TED Speak. So create some strong, durable bonds between us and the, between the components. These bonds can withstand the stresses of space travel, including vibrations, temperature changes, and the forces of launch and reentry. The use of silver ensures that spacecraft can endure the intense environment of space while keeping all the internal systems in perfect working order. What about solar panels? Now let's talk about power, specifically solar power that fuels many of NASA's spacecraft. Silver is used in solar cells, which are crucial power sources for satellites, rovers, and space stations. Silver's excellent conductivity allows these solar cells to generate electricity efficiently by converting sunlight into power. NASA's use of silver and solar panels on space missions has led to the development of more efficient solar technology here on Earth, providing cleaner and more sustainable energy solutions. So what about the impact of NASA's use of silver on Earth? Now, you might be wondering, what does all this mean for us down here on Earth? Well, the innovations made possible by NASA's use of silver has trickled down into our everyday lives in several transformative ways. Number one, advancements in electronics. Silver's role in electronics from space missions to consumer gadgets has led to the development of faster, more efficient, and reliable devices. Today, Silver is used in everything from cell phones and computers to televisions, home appliances. NASA's pioneering work with silver in space has helped push the boundaries of electronics, making our devices smaller, more powerful, and more energy efficient. Thanks to NASA's research and development of silver-based solar cells for space aircraft, we now have access to more efficient solar energy here on Earth. Solar panels have become an essential part of the renewable energy landscape, providing clean, sustainable power to homes, businesses, and even the entire cities. The silver used in space missions has helped to make solar power more accessible and cost effective, contributing to a greener future for all of us. But what about medical applications? And you know that silver is also used in medical technology. Silver's antimicrobial properties make it an ideal material for medical devices and wound care. NASA has used silver in spacecraft to prevent growth of harmful bacteria in closed environment of the spacecraft. And today, silver-infused products are used in hospitals and healthcare settings worldwide from wound dressings to catheters. Special silver helps reduce the risk of infection and promotes faster healing. Advanced manufacturing, NASA's use of soldering and bonding technology has inspired innovations in manufacturing here on Earth. More precisely, durable and longer lasting components are now being produced using silver-based technologies, helping improve everything from automotive parts to advanced machinery. 
and space exploration communication technologies. Finally, the communication systems that NASA developed using silver-based technology have helped lay the groundwork for modern telecommunications. The reliability and efficiency of these systems have been crucial, not only for space missions, but also for satellite-based communication systems that support the global internet, television broadcast, and GPS technology we rely on every day. So in conclusion, silver may have started its journey as a precious metal used in coins and jewelry, but its role in space exploration has opened up a whole new world of possibilities, from powering spacecraft and ensuring electrical conductivity to advancing solar technology and improving medical treatments. Silver's contributions are far-reaching. NASA's use of silver and its missions have made life not only easier here on Earth, but also more sustainable for all of us around the globe. So you, next time you glance up at the stars and marble technology in your pocket, remember that silver, in its quiet, understated way, continues to push the boundaries of what's possible, both in space and on Earth. You like the way that's worded? I think it was wonderful. <laughs> we worked a lot of effort into this. Come on, guys. Give me a round of applause or something here. Thank you for tuning in. As always, keep looking up. Till next time, let's get rolling. court allows states to block Planned Parenthood from receiving Medicaid funding. Thank goodness. South Carolina has argued that no one, one's rights were violated when it decided to exclude Planned Parenthood from its Medicaid program. South Carolina Governor Her uh, Henry McAster speaks at a press conference outside the U.S. Supreme Court as justices hear oral arguments in Medina versus Planned Parenthood in South Atlantic and Washington, D.C. The U.S. Supreme Court on June 26 ruled that South Carolina may stop abortion provider Planned Parenthood from taking part in the state's Medicaid program. The majority opinion in the 6-3 decision in Medina versus Planned Parenthood South Atlantic was written by Justice Neil Gorsuch. The new ruling reverses a federal appeals court decision that blocked South Carolina from excluding Planned Parenthood from the program. The court majority held that the federal law does not permit health care providers or patients to sue a state if it runs afoul of a federal law requiring that Medicaid patients be allowed to use their preferred provider. And here's the lawsuit that was filed and they won. Can we just acknowledge for a second that this 6-3 decision by the Supreme Court, which says that states can withhold tax dollars from funding abortion, is an incredible blow to the entire baby murder industry, not to mention the politicians that they regularly donate to. Big win for the little guys, though. Costing us too much money as it is. Time to re remind the country the Communist Control Act of 1954 is still law. That means that you can't serve in government if you're part of a communist organization. Interesting to read on. But it gets even better. The Naturalization Act says that if a new citizen pushes communist revolution within five years, that's proof they lied to get in. Their citizenship can be revoked. So here's the play. President Trump and Vice President Vance could do the same, uh, do the funniest thing ever. Start enforcing the law that already is on the books. No new books, no new bills, no new debates. Just strip the mask off the radicals and send a clear message. You don't get to destroy this country from within. Socialists, beware. You wanted a revolution? Let's start with you. Forgot the exits. Breaking, Jill Biden's chief of staff, Anthony Bernal, who was said to be the most powerful person in Biden White House, has now been subpoenaed by Congress. This comes after he refused to testify about Biden's cognitive decline. By authority of the House of Representatives by the Congress of the United States of America, this is the subpoena that was issued. Shadow President Neera Tandon testifies she oversaw Biden auto pen decisions, left this think tank and CEO mastermind behind liberal NGO non-governmental organization network acted as unelected un POTUS. Are you allowed to do that? What's the ramifications for that? Is it death? Is it hanging? Lever puller is going to get ready. People must be held accountable for this constitutional crisis. 
cover up three of President Biden's top aides, Deputy Chief of Staff Anthony uh, Bernal, Chief of Staff Anthony uh, Annie, Tomasi and Senior Advisor Ashley Williams have get until tomorrow to agree to testify about their knowledge of the auto pen pardons and who was actually running the government. I would imagine that's today. This new this article's from yesterday. Who gets news out here that's less than 24 hours old? It's helped the hard to provide it. If they refuse Republicans on the House Oversight Committee, we will issue subpoenas for the conspirators. When corrupt politicians start going to jail, then we can start trusting government again. So here's the timeline that we think we're going to be following here. And the Fed, free the world, and that'll be on July 4th. Level the playing field, drain the swamp, power to the people, abundance for all, transparency for all, accountability. We have a whole lot we're going to be learning from one of these channels. It might be Voice of America, the one that President Trump just started. I don't know, but it will be, be widely known to us. But isn't it interesting that ISO 2024 was supposed to go in a different time, and they changed it to go into effect on July 14th, 10 days after July 1st. Is that telling you anything? I don't know. You read what you want into it. You want hope? Read into positivity. A scary story. An economics professor at a local college made a statement that she had never failed a single student before, but had recently failed an entire class. The class had insisted that socialism worked, that no one would be poor and no one would be rich. The great equalizer. The professor then said, OK, we will have an experiment in this class. All grades will be averaged and everyone will receive the same grade. No one will fail, but no one will receive an A either. After the first test, the grades were averaged and everyone got a B. Students who studied hard were upset and the students who studied little were happy. As the second test rolled round, the students who studied little studied even less. And the ones who studied hard decided they wanted a free ride too, so they studied little. The second average test result was a D. No one was happy. When the third test rolled round, the average was an F. As the test proceeded, the scores never improved. As bickering, name-calling and blame all resulted in hard feelings. And no one would study for the benefit of anyone else. To their great surprise, all failed. And the professor told them that socialism would ultimately fail. Because when the reward is great, the effort to succeed is great. When the government takes away all the reward, no one will try or want to succeed. And that is socialism, my friends. A race to the bottom. Video here, honey. They always tell me that the problem is high taxes, but they're wrong. Of course, high taxes are extremely high here in the United States. I, I give you that. The real problem is not the high taxes themselves, but the fact that they are not even really funding the government. Not even those high taxes, higher than a lot of places in the world, not even those taxes are really funding the government. So who's financing the government? Government is financed by treasury bonds. And who buys the treasury bonds? Mostly the Fed. And how does the Fed buy them? By printing money. But what backing does the Fed have for that money being printed? The treasury bonds themselves. So basically, you finance the government by printing money out of thin air. Well, so if the government can print the limited amounts of money out of thin air, why do they collect taxes? The answer is simple, but it's very shocking. The real problem is that you pay high taxes only to uphold the illusion that you are funding the government, which you are not. It's shocking, but it's true. The government is funded by money printing, paper backed with paper, a bubble that will inevitably burst. The situation is even worse than it seems, because if most Americans and the rest of the world were to become aware of this farce, confidence in your currency would be lost, the dollar would fall, and the Western civilization with it. If the next president of the United States doesn't make the necessary policies and the structural change, sooner or later that bubble will burst. There's still time. You don't have to make the same mistakes we did in the 60s and the 70s. You can still jump before the water boils. Winning the election isn't enough to solve these problems. They will not simply go away as a consequence of an electoral result. It will take a total re-engineering of the government top to bottom. It will entail making difficult decisions. It will be hard. The system will push back. But you have the right to determine your own fate. Trump policies will cut deficits up to $11 trillion, the White House economist has said. Chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors, Stephen Mirren, 
is who is saying this. President Donald Trump's policy will reduce U.S. fiscal deficits by up to $11 trillion over the coming decade, according to the White House chief economist, a rejection that defies analysts who say government debt is poised to climb to record lies in coming years. We calculate that overall, the reduction in deficits as a result of the total suite of president's policies is going to be roughly $8.5 to $11 trillion over the next over the 10-year budget window, Stephen Miron, chair of the Council of Economic Advisors, told reporters on a call Wednesday. Those are very big numbers. 